There once was a detective who played, played many things, played golf on Tuesday afternoons, played automated chess on his work computer during his lunch hour, played incessantly with the features on his worn-out walkie-talkie during his on-duty breaks, which, according to his cooperatives, were quite frequent, played solitaire at night, leaving several piles of cards around for everyone to see on his investigation table the following morning, aces always on top. Played a beaten up guitar in the middle of the night in a storage unit where he resided. The subtle vibrations of the rusty strings rattling off the walls. No one listening besides his crustaceous self. He was known by many as Carl Higgins, and throughout his years, he had played many different things. But there was something else that he played that people just hadn't realized until it was too late. It's a strange phenomenon. It's what some experts call the mind game. Yes, that is right. He played with minds. A detective cliche, perhaps, but how Higgins did it was indeed much more than just some scheme taken straight from the book of Sherlock Holmes. In fact, to many, he was just a normal man. He seemed just like a regular guy. He was a regular at the grocery store where I work. One time I remember ringing him out at the store. He was purchasing a six-pack of Mechalubs. He gave me a warm smirk after I gave him his receipt. I work at the building next door to the sheriff's department, but I've never seen the man nor his family. I've heard some things about him, often nice things. I've also heard that he is a proficient chess player. Indeed, Carl Higgins' primary strategy was to be a detective who was hard to detect or notice. Wearing a limited wardrobe, consisting of fleece jackets, t-shirts, and jeans, he would be able to approach potential convicts by merely walking down the street. Hello, I was planning on going to the Leonard Cafe with some folks. Do you have any idea what happened there? Did someone die? Yeah, I believe her name was Margaret Fickle. I don't know much about her. She had a yellow purse, I believe. She had too much money on her that day. Yeah, money. Thank you. That is all I need to know. As you can see, Higgins preferred to have a private identity, hiding his occupation in the shape of an unmemorable man. He invested in very few connections with people. I'm the opposite. I love the art of open conversation. But he loved the art of identity, and he also liked privacy. For 12 years, he lived with his wife, Susan, in a quiet, two-story, pristine house in Lake County, Illinois. For work, he drove to his private detective office in downtown Chicago, sometimes resorting there overnight when he wanted to be completely alone. Hey, Suzanne. I'm going to be staying overnight in Chicago. I've got some work to get done. But what about us, Carl? What about me? Don't worry. I'll take you off a Chinese or something. One night, Carl came home around two in the morning, his wife waiting to tell him something, that their 12-year relationship was over. I've been waiting for you. Suzanne, you're still awake? Yep. I've been waiting here all night. Honey, I But there's no you... reason you should be coming home at 2 a.m. unless you found someone else. Hope so! Well, I've had enough of this. This marriage is over. What? You threw our love away a long time ago. And you know what? You should go live in the trash, you piece of garbage. Why would you say such a thing? Because you'd rather live in a garbage can anyway. Perhaps taking his ex-wife's advice literally, Higgins decided to move himself, along with most of his personal belongings, into a vacant storage unit two blocks from his office. By then, he was a 45-year-old man who was beginning to feel contained by a life of formality. After his divorce... Carl became even more adventurous in his approach towards life. I mean, all he had was his job. He was becoming very dedicated to his work, for sure. He wouldn't experience much spectacle in his own life until the day he was murdered. It was around his 64th birthday. Most Chicagoans, on the day they heard about his untimely demise, expected to see on their television screens an image of a typical undercover officer, or even the Sherlocky kind of detective who wore flannel up and down him. Yet... All he wore that day was a white t-shirt and jeans. It was devastating, but also strange. He was wearing the same thing he always wore. I never would have thought he had such a crazy job. When I look at the picture on the TV screen, and underneath it, the words Detective Carl Higgins murdered at 64, I didn't know what to think. For one thing, he didn't look like he had anything to do with the deputy. 
in a world where his profession was just another easily identifiable societal niche, Carl Higgins chose to be different, chose to defy expectations of the people who had encounters with him. He was the detective who wasn't. That was his greatest mystery. That was how he played with people's minds. Yet, this mystery would cost Higgins his own life. It was a Sunday night. The year was 1984. He was walking back to his residence after a long evening of work. He had one of his most successful weeks on the job, investigating a murder at a local bar, tracking down both of the suspects who committed the wrongdoing. He was happy, daydreaming about getting back together with his wife. Woohoo! I feel accomplished. One, two, punch. Woo! I bet Suzanne will be proud. Yeah. Yeah! I forgot what a woman she was. Let's see. As Higgins turned a corner, two hooded men waiting behind the bushes swiftly ambushed him. Oh, dear God! According to Higgins' former cooperatives, he was stabbed 20 times with the perpetrator's pocket knives and then thrown into the shrubs before they ran off. It seemed like a senseless act after such a hopeful day, but the murder of Carl Higgins showed to the world that no matter who you are, you can't defend yourself, even when you are working for the police. The city can be dangerous. Carl was a brilliant man, but he wasn't careful enough. I still look up to him as a co-worker, despite his mistakes. I don't know how to say it. He was a force of nature. He was the detective who wasn't. <laughs>